Good morning. Good no, morning. it's not for sympathy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all remember a few years ago I had my right shoulder done. Uh -huh. Yeah, looking like I might have to have this one done. So Aww. we'll put that under it. That, it'll be all right. As my dad always told me, and there is, this is wisdom, this is truth. Because I can attest to it, it happens every time. It quits hurting when the pain goes away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Diane threw this at me the, uh, yesterday, yeah. told me to wear it, so uh, gotta listen to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I do see a specialist on next month, so now that we got that out of the way, good morning everyone! Good morning. Good morning. It's a great hand to hold it by. <laughs> For those of you who are online, let us know you're here. Tell us hi in the comments. We'd love to know who's joining us online this morning. All right, we've got a few announcements before we get started today. And first up on the announcement block. Bless you. Bless you. Well, I'm going to add one to this. I'm going to add Wednesday night because we're going to have a uh, Bible study and prayer on Wednesday night. So uh, feel free to join us for that. And uh, that'll start right here at 7 o'clock. Then we can jump up here and we have men's breakfast next Saturday, May 6, 9 a.m. So restaurant in here, <laughs> Bibles over there will be replaced by a grill. <laughs> we'll eat well, very well, maybe too well, but uh, we invite all the men to join us for that. Then uh, we're going to enlist the men to help us out a little bit here. We're going to tear down the restaurant. And we're going to set up the movie theater and we're going to be showing uh, the movie The Shack. Now, as I mentioned last week, this movie is based on a New York Times bestselling novel, The Shack. And it takes us on a father's uplifting spiritual journey. And I'm going to throw this disclaimer out just as I did last week, but I probably won't beat it up as much as I did last week. But we do recognize that this is a controversial movie just because of the nature of it. And by hosting this event, we are not endorsing the views expressed in this work of fiction. I will say fiction a couple of times, maybe. But it is a work of fiction. I think there we go. And But we see it as an opportunity to open up discussions into spiritual matters. So we're using it as a tool to reach more people for the gospel and for Jesus. Uh, for those that, of you that are watching online... Uh, when, in fact, when we get to the the comments, there'll be a link to the Grace Street Cinema uh, spot on our webpage that will have a picture or uh, the trailer in it. But in addition to that, when we get when Diane puts the worship music into the the feed there for you, it's at the very end of that. So I, we attached it to that for you as well, so you can watch it after all the music. And then the following week, we will have Orange Track Racing. Uh, that'll be on the 13th, and we will have registration at 9.30 with racing starting at, eh, we'll say about 10, because we're okay with stragglers coming in. Uh, you, know, you never know what's going to run into traffic or, heaven forbid, a detour because of road construction. Last year we had Blair's Ferry got shut down right there uh, by Rockwell, and people had to find a way around. It took an extra 10, 15 minutes to get here. So... We do invite you to join us for that. And then, last but not least, I am going to be putting in the link for the worship music into um, the comments there. Now we can kind of calm down, we not pay attention to that there were some snow flurries this morning. That was a little chilly out. It's supposed to get warmer later in the week. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. We thank you so much that you have chosen us, Father, that you not only have chosen us, but we can go all the way back to when you chose your, your people, Israel, to not become a country club like so many of our churches have today, but to become missionaries into the world and to take your message out into the entire world, Father. and we thank you for that. As we prepare to hear the message that you've given to Pastor Mark, we just pray a special blessing upon him that as he comes up here, you would give him the strength and the voice 
to deliver that message in such a way that we hear it, and not only hear it, but that we learn from it, and that we can go out into the world and use it. We thank you, Father, in all things that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our call to worship this morning. Oftentimes our call to worship, we'll see it come out of the Psalms or the Proverbs or the New Testament. Today's will be coming out of the Old Testament. We're going to be going to Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 and 8. And this is before Abraham has gotten his new name. So I'm not mispronouncing his name here. So when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abraham fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It is no longer, it will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. And I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give you the entire land of Canaan, where you now live as a foreigner, to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever, and I will be their God. This message that was given to Abram is the same message that God gives us today. We are to obey him in every aspect of our lives because he is God. And you know what? That should be enough. God is he's the only one who has the ability to meet our every need. Not our, he's not going to give you your every want and wish. But he will help you with your every need. El Shaddai, as we heard in the first part of this, is the name for God that emphasizes his power. And here God is repeating his covenant with Abram bringing it into focus and preparing to have it carried out. God reveals some things to Abram, and they're very specific. One, he would have many descendants. Two, many nations would come from him. Three, the covenant was for Abram and his descendants, which include us. And God would give those descendants the land of Canaan as their everlasting possession. It's interesting that you chose this as your call to worship this morning, because I've been in uh, Exodus and uh, coming out of that, and here's the thing. God gives us these things. He provided the land of Canaan as was promised. He gave them the power to take it. Just as he gives us a free gift through Jesus Christ to have everlasting life. Father God, we thank you for this message that you have given to Mark. I especially am looking forward to hearing this message on how we can choose and how we are the chosen. Father God, again, give Mark the words to speak and give us ears, minds, and hearts to hear. In Jesus' precious name. <laughs> well, good morning, church. Good morning. Despite the little snow flurries that we still see coming down, when I came in this morning here, there was enough where I actually used the wipers on my windshield. So it's, you know, improving outside <laughs> a bit. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so as we come into this time of worship this morning, I would like to invite the Holy Spirit to come with us. So uh, please uh, join with me as I say this prayer. Today, surrender your life to him and trust him. And draw on the power of the Spirit 
Let us pray this in one unison and one spirit. Father, thank you that I can depend on you. Empower my life with the Holy Spirit. Help me trust in you fully and to let your spirit guide my heart. Bring your Holy Spirit to us today. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful in the same spirit. Help us to delight in what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the message today is the choice and the chosen. And uh, this might be, you know, somewhat vaguely familiar to you from Friday, you know, concert time. But we make choices for everything we do in our life. It's, it's a constant stream. Your entire life is made up of choices. Good ones and some not so good at times. But we are the product of the choices we make. And I know I've said this many times, but it's really important that we understand that this may be the way that is the means to our eternal life. Those choices we make are the means to get us there. And there's, uh, you know, it may seem a little bit trite to say something like that, but it absolutely is a fact. And the fact is, there's only one way to enter into a right standing with God, and that is by faith. Faith is a choice, okay? Now, this is not some new revelation in the New Testament. This has been around for a long, long time. Believing in God and acting on that belief as a demonstration of faith, wow, this seems awful loud, has always been the way to get right with God. So I want you to hang on to that thought. Believing in God and acting on that belief as a demonstration of faith have always been the way to get right with God. See, when we do that, when we believe in God and we act on our faith, then we become righteous in what we do. Our actions become righteous. And that's what it means to get right with God. We have to get righteous in what we do. And it's by the acts of faith that we prove to God that we honor and believe in his mighty power. El Shaddai, God Almighty. God Almighty. See, it is in this mighty power that we understand that he is the most high God. Now, when we talked about that in the call to worship today, Abram's name was a pagan name. And God brought him out of that pagan past. People don't understand that. The reason the Jewish people changed their names was they were transforming those people. And so they took on a whole different persona. They have a different identity. So God gave him the identity from being Abram to being Abraham, the father of many nations, because that's what that means. Okay? Dr. David Jeremiah tells us that the fact of faith is recorded in the scriptures. The first one is recorded is by Eve, believe it or not, in response to the birth of her firstborn son, Cain. And that goes all the way back to Genesis 4.1, when she states, I have gotten with a man with the help of the Lord. And here she directly equates that birth of her son with God, with Yahweh's actions at that point, if we go into the Hebrew. Um, also in the Hebrew, it describes Eve as a woman of deep faith in the Lord. Now, when we hear the, the, the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, we're thinking, hey, you know, God, exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. But see, she knew firsthand that she was created by God. And she knew the awesome and almighty power of God that breathed life into her. And so she was a woman of strong faith. She was deceived, as we all can be. But it doesn't mean that she wasn't a woman of faith. So the Hebrew translations tell us that she is 
a woman of deep faith in the Lord. And this is really remarkable because this is the first mention of Eve in the Bible since the expulsion from the garden. So when we think about that, you know, she is bringing honor and glory to God by what she said, because of him, I'm able to have a son. See, and that took faith. We find in the Old Testament many examples of faith and action, and it took the ultimate faith in God for Noah's decision to build an ark and preserve the seed of man and of animals in obedience to God's instruction. I mean, let's think about this once. You know, can you imagine what Noah was going through? You know, with his neighbors. Okay. Hey, Noah, what you building an ark in the middle of the desert for? I mean, the questions had to be there. Uh, you do realize there's no water around here, right? And here's this massive boat. So what's with all the animals? You start a zoo as well? The one I love the best. Don't you know it's against the HOA rules? <laughs> I threw that in for you, buddy. Yeah. But in spite of all those things, and in spite of the negative comments from people around him, he could have gotten discouraged and given up. But see, his faith in action, his obedience to God, led him to build that boat in the middle of the desert with no water around. faith in action. Noah believed and obeyed God and proved it. And see, that's what faith is all about. He believed in God and he proved it. That's faith. Believing in God and his word and act upon it, by doing so, Noah made the choice then showed God he had complete faith in him. And here's the key. He committed to it wholeheartedly wholeheartedly. He didn't just mouth that he had faith in God. He just didn't call out the name of God and say, you know, God, I love you. He committed to it wholeheartedly, regardless of what his neighbor said or their HOA rules or whatever happened to be there. He committed his entire life to doing this and to obeying God. See, he made that choice. And in so, he, in so doing, he became a chosen and his family we're spared as well. The choices we make lead us to be the chosen. Hang on to that one as well. See, faith is a choice. We need to show God our commitment in what we do. And what I want to do today is kind of look at some of the great examples of people who chose to have faith in God and then committed to that faith. And there's numerous examples all throughout the scriptures of choices that were made by individuals long ago by faith and belief that led God to anoint the chosen people. Anoint the chosen people. That means he empowered them. He made their lives and, and made it abundantly possible for them to do what he had asked them to do by that anointing. So Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter. Anybody here ever read it? It's a great chapter. It's a great chapter. Great examples of faith is what this chapter is called. So Hebrews 11 verse 1 says it all. Faith is the confidence that we have hope for what will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things that we cannot see. That we cannot see. A lot of us are the doubting Thomases. Unless I can see it, touch it, feel it, I don't believe it. Okay? Now, on a conspiracy theorist, on the other hand, they're just the opposite. They'll believe anything, and then if it doesn't quite fit, they'll make something up to go along with it. But faith is the confidence that we, what we hope for will actually happen. It'll actually take place. And it gives us that assurance about things we cannot see. We cannot see our future, but by faith, if we have faith in Christ, if we believe in Christ... And if we believe in what the scriptures tell us, and we believe the word of God, then we will have eternal life. And he's gone ahead to prepare a place for us. And if he goes to prepare a place for us, he will come back and take us back with him. 
That's what the scriptures tell us. Through their faith, the people in the days of old, they earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That now, what we did not see, did not come from anything, now can be seen. So out of nothing, he created everything. And we can see it. So that we will have faith in God and know that he is God Almighty, El Shaddai. El Shaddai. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than what Cain did. Abel's offering made evidence that he was a righteous man. And God showed his approval of his gifts. And although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. The scriptures give us these examples so we understand the people that went before us paved the way for us to have the gifts of God, to be the chosen people. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He didn't die first. He was raised up whole because he pleased God. He disappeared because God took him. Now, before he was taken up, he was known to be a person who pleased God. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Sincerely. That's kind of another term for wholeheartedly in the synonym pile over here. So, sincerely means that we're, we take it to heart. We take it to heart that God exists and he is there for us. It was by faith that Noah built that large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that would have never happened before in history, ever. This is going to be a first. That's why they call it a flood of biblical proportions. Hmm. So Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received his righteousness through that faith. Now, when I read that, I was going, wow. So when Noah built the boat, lettered his family on it, he knew that the whole rest of the world was going to be killed off. But by faith, he obeyed God wholeheartedly and built the boat. And by doing that, God rewarded his family by being saved. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God and told him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him then as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going to go. And even when he reached the land that God had promised him, he had to live there by faith because he was like a foreigner. He didn't have any other family there. Anybody else that in, in those days, you, if you travel to a foreign land, you better know somebody who's there, number one, to protect your life and vouch for you at that point in time. But he, he was there. He knew no one. And even when he reached the land that God promised, he lived by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob. But see, in doing so, in acting out of faith, in obedience to God's word that told him to go there. What was his inheritance? The entire land of Canaan was given to them. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundation. A city designed and built by God because that's what he was dreaming of when he went there. And he was living in a tent. And it was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and too old. She believed that God would keep his promise because he came to her in a dream and he says, you will bear a son and that son will be the father of many nations. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was good as dead. A nation with so many people like that, there's stars in the sky and sand on the seashore. There's no way to count them. God took him up on top of of Mount Moriah, I believe it was, and he said, look up into the vast sky and see all the stars, and I will, I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky. And he gave him that promise. See, and that's what's called a covenant promise. 
It's a covenant promise when God keeps that promise and blesses and bestows on them. Now here's the thing to note. All of these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and they welcomed it. They didn't get to see the fruits of their labors of going into a foreign land or building the boat and coming through with the rest of God's promises. See, they all agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth, but they had something better in the future. They had a land that God was going to give them for eternity. So it continues on in verse 17. Now understand we haven't left the book of Genesis yet. We're still in Genesis. So Genesis 17, 1 through 8 says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Now here's what God tells him. He says, Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life, and I will make a covenant with you. I will make this promise with you. Now this promise for God is an eternal promise. You have to understand that. God is timeless. So when he's making this promise, he's making it for eternity and for all generations to come. That's key. Serve me faithfully and leave a blameless life and I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground and God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name and it will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham because you will be the father of many nations. And as I said earlier, that's what that translates to. Abraham means the father of many nations. Now, this is a covenant promise that God made with him if he would be faithful. And I will make you extremely fruitful and your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give you the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever, and I will be their God. Now, this is the first covenant that God made with people. This is where we inherited the right to be chosen people if we choose to believe and have faith in the promises of God. See, there's that if clause in there. This is all for us to inherit we will inherit this covenant of God that he will be with us forever through generation after generation if, if we believe, if we choose to believe and have faith in the promises of God. It goes on in Genesis 22, it's by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though God had already told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in that sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. And he took Isaac up by faith in action. And put him on an altar and as he was getting ready to give him the death blow with a knife an angel of the lord appeared to him and stopped him and by his faith by his choice to have faith and obey god to the very end this was his only son can you imagine can you imagine what god asked him to do and by faith he obeyed It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. And it was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently the people of, Egypt, of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with him. 
And it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. And they saw that God had given them an unusual child. And they were not afraid to disobey the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, his orders. And it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He gave up everything that he had, and he had everything. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of God than to own the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking ahead to that great reward. See, he was an heir to the covenant that God had already made with the people. He was already a chosen person. That reward was far greater than anything in Egypt. And it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt. Not fearing the Pharaoh's anger, he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. He kept his eyes on God. He had that picture of what God was bringing them through and that he was leading. God himself was leading the way, leading him out of Egypt. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorsteps and on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as if they were walking on dry ground. But the Egyptians that tried to follow were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls crashed down. And it was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people of her city who refused to obey God for she had given them a friendly welcome to the spies that God had sent ahead of time. So how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount all the stories of faith that are here in the Bible. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all of the prophets. How much more proof do we need? It's all there in writing. It's all there in writing. And yet, we choose to have disbelief. See, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice and received what God promised them. They shut the mouth of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weaknesses were turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. And it was by these choices that we today here, sitting in this room and online, <coughs> We became the chosen because of the choices that were made long ago by these people of great faith and because they chose to obey God and they had chose to believe in God Almighty, an unending power and strength. See, Hebrews 11 is a sermon that was preached so that the people would turn from their selfish desires with doubt and understand the faithfulness of God's people that had gone before them and paved the way for them to have God's promises. That's you and me sitting here today, standing here right in front of you. See, that sermon was meant for you and I to be a reminder that we need to get with God's plan. Stand up, take action. He gave to all of these examples, and he fulfilled the promises that he gave to those people. That plan is for us to join in God in eternity through faith and belief in Jesus Christ today. And that's our new covenant that we have with God. The new covenant that God pronounced was in John 3, 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not have it, have perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. 
God's light came into the world. But people loved the darkness more than light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do right will come to the light so that others that can see what they are doing is what God wants. The new covenant. Born in the blood and body of Christ so that we might have eternal life through him. Through him. Faith, belief, action are the ways that we can honor God and receive that eternal life. It's all spelled out for us. He gave us living examples. He gave us the best example in his son. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? See, the Old Testament was the story of God and his first covenant to the chosen people. How he remained faithful to his promises despite the rejection of those same chosen people. They still rejected God. Did God give up and say, hey, I'm done with you? Did he destroy all of mankind again? He made a covenant with the people and he made a promise that he will never again flood the earth and kill all of the people. That was a covenant to his people. Even though they rejected him, God turned around and he sent his only son, Jesus. And that New Testament is the story of God fulfilling his promise through the sacrifice of Jesus. To atone for the, sin, for the sins of the people so that we can inherit those promises of God. Even though we're not worthy on our own to receive it. We are worthy to receive it through Christ Jesus. Dear God, we come before you today feeling weak and uncertain. And we're struggling to find the courage and strength to face the challenges that lie ahead of us. Gracious God, please grant us the grace and the fortitude we need to endure and overcome those things that just seem larger than life. Help us to trust in your plan and know that you are walking with us every step of the way. Fill us today full of your strength and your peace. Give us the wisdom to make good decisions, to make the choices that we need to make, to bring honor and glory to you. We offer up our struggles to you today and we ask that you carry us through this difficult time. Heavenly Father, we're in need of your strength and guidance to help us stay focused on you and not our circumstances especially when we feel so overwhelmed, so unsure of how to move forward. Lord, today, please give us the courage to face our fears and the determination to keep going. Help us to trust in your loving presence, knowing that you are with us always by your promises, that you will be with us always, even to the end of the age. Help us to trust in, in fill us full of your grace and your peace, that you will bring us through. You will bring us through anything and everything and give us the wisdom then, Lord, to follow through. Help us to be strong in mind, body, and spirit and grant to us the endurance to keep going, even when things are tough. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for releasing us from our past sins and mistakes. May be filled today with your love and that your light. And that we might use your strength to serve you and others in kindness, in compassion. We pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Listening to that message, you look inside the sun. What a beautiful day.
Uh, and this comes from my devotional this morning. This is how tied together this message was for me. Uh, it said this. It says, the land was the inheritance of the people of God. And Joshua addressed the people of Israel this way. How long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you? And that can be changed because the covenant is new. As Mark said in, in, towards the end of the sermon from John 3, the new covenant. So we have a new covenant. So we ask, how long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off taking salvation that we get through Jesus Christ. And we are reminded each and every week of this as we take communion together. This is our reminder, the reminder that was instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the night that he was betrayed. He took the bread and he broke it saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And as they were coming to the end of the meal after they had sang some hymns, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for the sins of many. And many means everyone, whether they chose him or not, including this one's kind of hard. Even though he, this person probably didn't ever accept the inheritance, including Barabbas, who was the one Shed for you, take and drink. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what this meal represents and the reminder that it gives us that you gave us all an inheritance by what your Son did on the cross. Let us go forth boldly in your power, accepting it, acting upon it and living a life as those who are called out in Hebrews chapter 11, those who are called out in this chapter of faith. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So now it's time for prayer for the peoples. The prayers for the people. <laughs> so if anybody would like us to ask for prayer. Also, um, is there anything else? Anybody else? Before I go on. Um, I know I stand up here every Sunday and I pray for all of you. Um, I've had some health issues this week and I would just ask for prayer for me. I ended up in the ER yesterday. Um, Friday when I was with Carla, I had a weird attack on my right side, severe pain, and uh, I made it home. And yesterday morning I woke up and did it again. So I went in and um, they think I might have had a stroke. So um, they said, well, not felt most likely it is possible you may have had a small stroke. <coughs> Given this, I'm supposed to start taking Plavix for 21 days of aspirin. So I don't want to claim a stroke. I know there's some issues I have with some discs and things like that. So I go to the doctor tomorrow and I just, you know, would ask for prayer that they would figure out what's going on because my whole right side is in severe pain. I feel like I've been split in half. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just praise God for... Um, everything that he can do for us and I just prayed constantly and he was there with me and got me through it all so so I just thank him and praise him and honor him this morning and I want to start with Psalms 139 1 3 and 16 O Lord you have searched me and you know me you know when I sit and when I rise 
You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So Father God, we lift up Harold to you this morning and we praise you and honor you for a life well lived. As his body weakens, God, let him lean on your strength for the time he has left. Bring the Holy Spirit into his room and comfort Mark and Lori as well in the peace that passes all understanding. Let them rest in you today, for you alone are our strong tower, our refuge and shelter in times of trials and suffering. Cover them with your love, dear Jesus. And Father God, I lift up um, Atlas's mother, Louise. I lift up Jim Anderson, who had surgery this week for a brain tumor, and Carissa's stepmother, Beth, who had hip surgery this week. And we just pray that your healing power rest upon them and give them strength and comfort in each new day. Just let the blood of Jesus wash over them, Lord Jesus, and comfort them right where they're at and bring them to healing in Jesus' holy name. I pray for Demetrius. I pray for all my grandchildren today as well. And I pray for uh, Monica's son, Matt. Hold on to them, Father God. Do not let the evil one enter into their lives. Put Christian people in their path. Keep them from harm and bring them to a right relationship with you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. I lift up Doug and I ask that you find him a dwelling to live in, Lord Jesus. We thank you and praise you that Doug knows you and is spending time with you in your word, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that he lifts you up wherever he is at and keep him in perfect peace and um, comfort in Jesus' name. And Father God, I ask for peace in our hearts today for none of us know what each day will bring. <clears throat> we know that the blood of Jesus can overcome any and every weakness in our lives. Let Jesus forgive us today. Let Jesus cleanse us today. We are all part of his royal bloodline, and we have an inheritance that far outweighs all others. We thank you, Jesus, and honor and praise your holy name today. I gotta tell you, God, there's nothing that happens by mistake. And uh, this week, um, they moved Dad into a different room, and and uh, so he got new roommates again. So he's, he's had several different roommates this week. Uh, but the set of roommates, roommate that he got in, uh, was in there for a glioblastoma, uh, brain tumor in his head, and he and his wife were really questioning, you know, what's going on, and that, so I. You know, with going through what I did with my brother, I was able to sit there and share with them and pray with them and give them some peace and comfort in that time because it's, you know, it's the great unknown uh, is what's going on in there. And so God prepares us, and I've said this so many times, uh, God prepares us by what we go through, the trials that we go through in life. We never know why we have to go through them and endure them, but he brings us through them. And then he uses us because we have that experience to minister to others and give them the opportunity for grace and peace and mercy. And so God is good all the time. And all the time. And all the time. As we come to our end of our online portion of our service today, I just thank you for joining us today and, and uh, wish God's grace and peace upon you uh, as we pray this closing prayer. Gracious Lord God, we come before you today and we confess that we are sinners and that we are in need of your grace and mercy. We repent of our sins today and we pray for forgiveness. We pray that by the power and the love and the blood of Jesus that we can be redeemed and made whole again with you. Lord Jesus, we ask for you to come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior today, here and now. We thank you for your blessed assurance that we will be with you in heaven and that your spirit gives us the strength, the hope, and the love to be your disciples in this lost world we live in. 
Lord, we lift up our lives, our church, our city, and our state, and our nation to you. We ask that you do a mighty act of healing in us and in the world, that your word and your name would be boldly proclaimed, and that your works would be done. Embolden us today to step up and step out, to bring home the lost, lead us to growth in your spirit, and keep us ever faithful unto you. In your precious name we pray today.